it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 tarot scopes. First of all, I want to say I hope you have a very safe and happy new year and that you are very responsible as you celebrate. Secondly, thank you guys for being patient with me. These are going to be coming out very slowly because they do take me a lot of time to make while I'm also making personal videos for other 2019 reads. So you are still able to order these right now. I'll probably be doing them all the way until the end of January just because it's going to be 2019 for a couple of months, y'all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just going to be a look at each month with guidance from not only tarot, but numerology and um, any oracle card that wants to come out. So the oracle cards will be drawn beforehand. We will draw the tarot live it will, as I shoot the video and go that way. Some of y'all might have to look at me for a while. We might just look at the cards. It depends on how I feel as I'm recording them. This is my first time to shoot one of these videos, so be patient with me. Last year I did a shorter version of it. So let's talk a little bit about 2019. It is the year of the three. So what does that mean? Communication, creativity, expression. This um, number rep is represented in the tarot by the Empress, the world, and the hangman, right? And so you have to think about the Empress being very creative, the hangman being um, kind of stuck in suspension, right? Because they have to decide what they're going to surrender in order to have the universe. So this is going to be one of those years that you're going to have to creatively communicate and you're going to have to harness your creative energies in order to feel like you're accomplishing what's, ha what's happening. Now, if you are a three in the year of the three, just know that Jupiter is your ruling planet. If you're a three, you can add up your birth date, your birth month and year, and it's going to calculate what what number you're vibrating at, and that'll kind of give you a lot of um, information about how you operate in the world. All right. So if you're interested in a personal read for 2019, hit me up at Ariana Luciano at gmail.com or on the gram at Ariana Luciano. Be blessed, family. Hello, Taurus. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 yearly forecast, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love. High fives and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. What's up, Taurus? Woo! I'm super, super excited to be doing this because y'all so patiently waited. So we're gonna jump right into the theme of the year, big baby. And your theme for 2019 is no other than exploration. It's time to create a new path with purpose. I'm gonna tell you there's something about cycles because I have the circle and thunderhead. I have the compass on the top and I got all them coins over there. And you're going to be blessed to find out that there is a new way for you to get what you want. All right. This is about going forward, realizing your hidden potential. You'll find the confidence that you need. Right now, your soul is saying, let's go. Let's go explore. Let's go have a good time. And there are many things to be found and uncovered from the past experiences. So a lot of times people are like, oh, forget the past. Pretend like it never. No, it's, we're not going to pretend it didn't happen. We're going to look at it. We're going to reevaluate it. And we're going to use it to, to help us make better decisions, right? So with that, your soul is saying, let's go, baby. Let's go for a trip. Let's travel. Let's do what we need to do. And while your confidence grows, so does your independence. Leave the emotional baggage in the past, all right? Unpack that backpack and let's go make some new memories. This is attributed to the number 13. 13 comes down to a four. This will be the foundation for your year as you move forward. Now, Thunderhead is coming in. This kind of sums up what happened last year, what's going on this year, that kind of beautiful energy, right? And the theme of this card is wisdom. And in the past, it talks about um, this card calls on you to be fearless in the face of adversity. In the past, you have let fear govern your actions. So looking at 2018, what was it in 2018 that you were afraid of? What was holding you back? All right. How did you not move forward with your abundance? How did you not uh, realize what you were really gifted with? Right. Now, in the middle of the card, it talks about the project that consumed the artist's whole life. He refused millions of dollars in federal funding to complete the statue, saying it would compromise the site. Which one of your dreams, your projects, have you still not completed, all right? And what distracted you? Did you run out of money? Did you get discouraged? This card reminds you to never give up. Finish what you started, Taurus, all right? That goes for creative endeavors also. However, the potential of this is talking about the sun behind the white buffalo calf woman on the top of this card. It denotes travel. So we have exploration and then we have travel. Some of y'all will be moving on to bigger and better things. Do not be afraid of what you have to leave behind. All right. Reconnect with your people of your chosen land and strengthen your bonds with your sacred will of life. 
follow your vision regardless of the dangers that lie ahead. All right, some of y'all are going through some really unfamiliar things. This is like some groundbreaking stuff. And this will be a year of huge travel and financial blessings because we have the six of coins coming in, ready to cha-ching-ching, -ching, baby, I'll up in your life. And this is you being willing to share and give because you're gonna be blessed. This is generosity, this is gifts, and this is you knowing where your money is going. And on a spiritual level, you're just blessed this year, okay? So your number that I'm getting right now is 464, right? Because of 13, then the 6, and then the 4. And 464 is letting you know that you're surrounded by angels, you're surrounded by your protection of loved ones, and you're supported in all your ways. Now, I took 464, added that together, it comes down to the number, wait, it was 10, 4, 14 which comes to a five, but 14 is asking you to call upon your ancestors, your angels, your guides, to help you stay positive during all of this exploration, all right? And then of course, card, the number five, card number five, the number five is significant of change happening, okay? Things are changing, and change is good, it's exciting, but at the same time, it's kind of freaking scary, okay? <laughs> so let's prepare for our year ahead, and we're gonna be pulling this down and looking at January, February, and March, all right? These are split up into four quarters, okay? Your theme for the first of the year is, baby, you tired. <laughs> you are tired. Now, the exhaustion card is coming in and it's kind of telling you like, look, it's time to call for help. It's time to stop trying to do everything by yourself. And that's with the Six of Pentacles. It's coming in, okay? So that is your theme, is like taking a break January, February, and March and learning to like share <laughs> responsibilities, okay? Now, what we need to leave behind in, 20, in 2018 is the contrary meaning of the Lord of the dead. And this is allowing others to choose for you. This is keeping you out of balance. Taurus, it is time for you to decide. It is time for you to make a choice. You're exhausted because you've been doing all this stuff for everyone else, but what have you done for yourself, okay? And what we need to embrace and what we need to start and initiate is the energy of the koala. And that is empathy. So empathy is saying, wow, that's a really tough situation. I, you know, and, and you not thinking you have to make it better, all right? That's you sitting with them and, and being there with them, but not owning their energy, okay? Speak less and listen more. This is a very empath empathetic card. You're over exhausted because you've been carrying all of these burdens of everyone else that you're unable to find balance, all right? So let's jump into the cards. Rolled a four, very foundational year. Let's cut the deck and I have the King of Wands upright. Who is this Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy with the chariot reversed? I kind of feel like what our exhaustion is is that we're carrying and we're trying to over control a situation or we're trying to make something out of nothing, okay? So let's see what's coming in for January. Whoa, January, that came in quick. Ten of Arrows, and then February is the Princess of Arrows. Some of y'all are dealing with Gemini, Libra, Aquarian energy, or just lots of information. Let me straighten that out. Overall energy, some of y'all have this Aries energy coming through, and y'all just don't want him to, okay? It's like, don't, I'm not ready. But Aries is coming in for you, baby. <laughs> Stop fighting the resistance of change, <laughs> all right? So in January, let's talk about the celestial actions we got going on. On the 6th, Uranus goes direct, 28 degrees Aries. That's that Uranus energy. It's coming in, it's about to change. It's about to wreck shop, like they say. On the 7th, Venus enters into Sag. On the 20th, the sun enters into Aquarius. On the 21st, the full moon lunar eclipse, 0 degrees Leo. And on the 24th, Mercury enters into Aquarius. Now, if you're curious about that energy at that zero degrees, Leo, I just partnered with this guy named Berg, the astrologer. We will be going live on Instagram on January 20th at 8 p.m. Central Time, all right? With that being said, tune in. The Ten of Arrows is representative of the January energy, and I kind of feel like this is you just saying the hell with it. This is the worst that it's been for you at one time. I feel 2018 is really rough for you, but this is also 
you getting out of your own way. No more self-sabotage. No more ignoring the red flags. It's just time to move forward. Give me a little bit more. We're ready for the change. We're ready for a big change. There's a huge transformation with this energy coming in. Now, we have three full moons at zero degrees, Leo, Virgo, and Libra. Zero is representative of a new beginning. We finished 2018 with a full moon in Cancer at zero degrees. What is that telling us? All of this is new energy coming in. Will we be tired? Hell yeah. But transformation is happening. And you will be receiving information at the end of the year that's going to transform the way you see somebody in the new year. In February, we have this beautiful energy <laughs> of <laughs> the Princess of Arrows reversed, all right? Now, February the 3rd, Venus enters into Capricorn. We have a new moon in Aquarius on the 4th. The 10th, Mercury enters into Pisces. Communication may be a little <laughs> shady. On the 18th, the sun enters into Pisces, and on the 19th is that full moon in Virgo at zero degrees. However, I'm going to tell you, during this time, be very aware about the way that you're communicating and receiving communication. This could be the energy of somebody trying to come in and help with that transformation, which causes the tower to happen in March, all right? So let's see what this princess wants to tell you. And I have like a bunch of cards falling out. Oh, gosh. Okay. Card number two. I have the Ace of Pentacles reversed. So I feel like there's going to be like this false start at the beginning, right? So in February, you're like, hey, we're going to make it better. We're going to do things. We're going to communicate better. We're going to travel. We're going to do what we need to do. And it's right in front of this universe. But it's like a monkey wrench in something. You're gonna receive information that's just gonna be like, oh my gosh, I didn't see this coming. I don't know, I don't know where this is coming from. All right, so I wanna see how to work with this energy real quick. If some of these cards wanna talk to me, you wanna call and talk to me. Okay, this deck. How will they work through February? Freedom! It is time for you to make the choice and the decision. And I think that was part of the theme too, is don't let other people decide for you. Do not let this person come in, whether they are male or female, sending you some foul ass text message or email or some form of communication online or whatever, some skewed information. You always have the choice for transformation. So yes, exhaustion will be high at the beginning of the year. Does that mean it's gonna be a bad year? No, you're getting all the junk out the way so you can have a good one, all right? Now, moving on into March, we have on the 5th, Mercury retrograde, new moon in Pisces on the 6th, the sun enters into Aries on the 20th. On the 20th, a full moon in Libra, zero degrees. The 28th, Mercury goes direct. However, this is you facing all of these things head on, whether this is your energy or somebody here to help. Now, the tower occurs in March. So with me looking at death, with freedom and the tower, I do feel like this is a fresh start for you in March. Like you're just like, you know what? I can't do this anymore and I'm ready to move forward. What does the tower want Taurus to know? <laughs> okay. Ten of Pentacles, it's complete. It's done, it's finished. The tower's falling down because you've either learned everything you can learn from this situation or you've completed this cycle and you're ready to move forward into the next part of the year. So with this transformation and with the tower and the word exhaustion, I'm just gonna tell you, make sure you're getting plenty of rest at the beginning of the year. Stop running yourself ragged for everyone else and start doing more self-care for yourself, okay? Now, we're gonna move into the second half of the year. We're going into April, May, and June, baby. And your theme is is take a nap. No, I'm just kidding. It's not take a nap. <laughs> You're a lot stronger than you think you are. What you need to do to get through is the chameleon and what we need to stop is mending. Reversed. Okay. So in April, May, June, and June, April, April, May, and June, you're really discovering how strong you are. And the way you're doing that is by standing in the background, watching everything scope out and play out as you kind of make a plan. All right. 
This is not you trying to control the situation. This is you simply evaluating the situation so that you can make a better choice. We are making choices about whether to mend this fence or not, mend this relationship or not. And with it coming out reverse for many of you, it will be letting this go. It makes making peace with the situation does not mean that we have to carry that peace all year long, okay? Now, in April, we have on the 10th, Jupiter will go retrograde in Sagittarius. Check where Jupiter is in your chart. On the 19th, we have a full moon in Libra. On the 20th, we have the sun enter. How do we have one in I put that wrong. We have a full moon on the 19th. I don't think it's in Libra. <laughs> the sun enters into Taurus. Then we have a Pluto retrograde on the 24th and on the 29th, Saturn retrograde. Okay? I need to check that note because it's not in Libra, guys. It's not in Libra. All right, let's see what April has for you. April, May, and June. The theme is when I cut the deck, it is, y'all must be dealing with fire sign energy or this like excited energy over something that you're just like upset about this injustice and now you're ready to, this one's the one who exercises the demon. So I feel like you're getting rid of everything that brings you an injustice, makes you feel like you're being treated unfairly. All right, so let's see. Energy for April. Look at that. Four of Wands. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. May. Ooh, we got some marriage. We got some babies. <laughs> and June. Five of Cups. Boom, boom, boom. But look at this. Second time you get Six of Pentacles, right? Overall energy for you for this quarter. So, in April we have the Four of Wands. So, I feel like there'll be some family celebrations. Some of y'all might be celebrating a baby coming, a baby shower, but there's some sort of celebration. Even if you're celebrating what you're releasing, there's something that's going on in April that's going to be really exciting for you that you're putting down your roots. I almost feel like some of y'all may even be buying a new house or something with the four of, um, four of wands. Okay. I'm trying to get you some more information on it. And these cards feel a little sticky. One more time. Okay, those two cards fell out. Let's see. We are celebrating the fact that we're no longer living in a fantasy. We're no longer looking at the past. We're moving forward to our creative endeavor. So some of y'all who are creating something new, for example, a new website, a new business, a new life, <laughs> a new house, you're like, you know what? I'm leaving this, this illusion behind and I'm moving forward. For some, it is, an, it is a relationship you're leaving behind. The illusion is gone. You're celebrating. You're putting down your roots. And in May, happy birthday, big baby. You are creative. You are fertile. You have all this beautiful energy. And you're looking at that illusion and you're like, mm -mm, baby, I'm going to make what I need to make. And I feel like your heart chakra is completely in control in May with all of that beautiful, beautiful green and then her chest being exposed. So on the 4th, we have a new moon in Taurus. On the 6th, Mercury enters into Taurus. The 15th, um, Venus enters into Taurus. We have a full moon in Scorpio, 27 degrees. And then the sun enters into Gemini on the 21st. So in May, I'm going to say you are full of fertility. What kind of energy do they need to work through May? Discernment. Now I'm going to tell you, look beyond. It says look beyond. Look at, them, look at the eyes on the links. Okay, I'm all excited. Look at the eyes. Like, it's like big baby we saw what that was and we're not going down that way however this is like look past the superficial value do not get stuck on something because it looks good because it's a fantasy all right we're moving on we're doing good we're moving into june which on the third we have a new moon in gemini 12 degrees 17th full moon in sag 25 degrees saturn sextile neptune beautiful energy on the 18th on the 21st neptune retrograde in pisces and then on the 21st the sun enters into cancer and we're at the five of cups so I feel like we have creatively worked through things. However, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt, right? So in this card, the Five of Cups, Gilgamesh loses his best friend, all right? So this is you losing the star reverse. And you're like, man, I'm getting through it. I saw things for what they weren't, but it still hurts. But I have my two cups and I'm ready to move on, okay? You ready to move forward. Give me more insight. Oh, beautiful. We're healing the Four of Arrows. 
So I really feel, and look, and at the bottom of the deck, I have you right there. You're healing, you're moving forward, you're standing your ground, you're actually traveling. You're traveling and you're learning how to work with your anxiety because I have these two eights at the bottom of the deck too. So I have the eight of pentacles, the eight of wands, and the hierophant. Behind those two eights is the ace of cups reversed. So yeah, you kind of disappointed about something, but you're healing and you're moving forward. So with that being said, we're going to jump into July, August, and September. July is intense, all right? July is the real deal holy field going on, okay? Theme is the truth. How to move through it is the lizard. And the dog is coming in for what nuts to do, okay? Truth in this card is like kind of disarming the ego, really looking at things for what they are, seeing things as they can be and as they should be, okay? And then we have this lizard energy coming in. It looks like he's kind of praying. I'm gonna say somebody's gonna take the mask off, whether it's you or somebody else, but that mask is coming off. And it's almost like you expected it to come off because the lizard is representative of abundance, sensuality, fertility, and pleasure, okay? So this is coming in and it's telling you to enjoy good music, have a good meal, enjoy life, abundance, and luxuries. But it's when you disarm your ego and you look at things for what they are, then you're like, oh my gosh, I really do have everything I want. I have what I want and what I need to move forward. What I need to stop doing is being like the dog. And the dog in this deck is talking about you have too many masters. Your loyalties are misplaced. Um, where is your focus? It's time to find out who is loyal to you and who you need to be loyal to. All right, as opposed to trying to please everyone else, this three months is about taking care of your abundance, taking care of your pleasures, making sure that you're okay. All right, now, in July on the 2nd, I'm telling you guys, this is a, a rough month. New moon, total solar eclipse in Cancer, 10 degrees. Venus enters into Cancer. Mercury retrograde, 4 degrees Leo. Chiron retrograde, 5 degrees Aries. Full moon, partial lunar eclipse, Cappy, 24 degrees. And then on the 22nd, it's Leo season. Venus enters into Leo on the 27th. And the new moon in Leo on 8 degrees. And then Mercury goes direct. So we have this retrograde, and then we have it going direct all in July. So let's see what's going on for these three months. And as I cut the deck, look at this. This is that Aries energy. I just feel like Aries are going to be really strong for you this year, or this fiery energy. And this is like that new beginning can be yours. You can move forward. It's in your hands. So, okay. July, we have some regrets in love. In August, we're like, mm -mm, I'm going to go ahead and do me. <laughs> and let's look at September. We are taking control. Control. And here's that Gemini Libra Aquarian energy. I'm telling you, I don't know what these air signs are doing to you. They're not being nice. All right. So in July, we have this wonderful energy and we have this five of arrows situation. So the Five of Cups was what we had at the end of June, right? Remember the Five of Cups? And now we have the Five of Arrows. So that's the number 55, right? That's significant changes. Taurus, the number 555 has been huge for you. Even in the 2018 read for December, that was like your numbers on your mind, body, and soul were 555. So I believe that this is like breakthrough time for you. And you might be seeing that number five repetitively all year 2019. All right? Now, with this five of arrows being reversed, I want to see how to work with that energy. So you're going to be thinking things through in July, all this energy going on, and it's like, oh, uh, and it's time for us to release um, shame and guilt. So porcupine is innocence. And sometimes with shame and guilt, what we do is we're so embarrassed about maybe the way we did something or the way we handled it that we pull back and we put boundaries or blocks between us and other people, right? But in all reality, we're looking for acceptance. So it's almost like shame and guilt are like the Bopsy twins that you had at the beginning with the 10 of arrows reverse coming back to visit in July, all right? And the way to work with it is just to release it. And I know that sounds super easy, but sometimes it's just admitting it and saying, you know what, I didn't like the way I did that, but it's okay. You know, I'm gonna move forward. 
and you're gonna move forward through positive affirmations. This is the I am, I am strong, I am brave, I am making the right decisions. In order to counter react the shame and guilt, you have to pull back into who the hell you are, Taurus, okay? Now, in August, you have this beautiful Princess of Wands. You have a lot of motherly and birthing energy. So whether you're birthing a project or having a baby, this is you really going through this um, creation phase, okay? In August, on the 11th, we have Jur J Jupiter going direct, 14 degrees Sag, Mercury entering into Leo, and your Uranus going retrograde in your sign, 6 degrees. The full moon in Aquarius, Sun enters into Virgo, and the 30th, we have um, the new moon <clears throat> in Virgo, 6 degrees. So let's see what this princess wants you to know for August. As you're birthing the situation, or I'm going to say dealing with fire sign energy, but this is like very active, like very creative energy because we even have that ace of wands right there and we have a spirit guide coming in for the first card oh gosh then all of them want to fall out the spirit guide's coming in for either you or another earth sign. And this is telling you, hey, let's realign and let's focus. We have some really creative energy. I'm gonna tell you, be very careful, Taurus, if you have another earth sign trying to come in and take what you've been working on so well, because I feel like you, you've you been working on some things. So let's see the energies that you have and how to work with that. Let me go to the animal deck. What energy does Taurus need during the month of August? So in August, guys, you are going through some things because you are a healer, all right? With this card, what it wants you to focus on is the healing in your hands. And if you, your hands might need to be shaken sometimes, you know, like just shaking your hands so that you can wake up that energy in them because you have healing in your hands and in your heart. So you're dealing with heart space and hand healing. And remember, you're very creative, but sometimes we go through things in order so we can help heal others, which goes to that Chiron energy. So that Chiron retrograde, five degrees, Aries, might be having some effect with you. Okay, look at where Chiron falls in your chart, learn to see what that, what that means for you, and find ways to heal it through affirmations and actually facing it head on. All right, because Chiron is the wounded healer. Now, in September, it's a pretty chill month. Saturn goes direct on the 18th, full moon in Pisces, and the sun enters into Libra. But we're at a decision and we're at a crossroad. But I feel like here, this is the game changer month for you in September. Because this is where you start making your decisions and you stop giving that power to someone else. I'm like, bah, bah, bah. We have right here the spirit guide telling you, don't put your hopes and dreams in anyone else. Put them in yourself. And I want to see what this spirit guide has for you. We're going to go to the angel deck or the spirit guide deck. I think you're dealing with a Gemini. I just feel like Gemini energy is coming in really strong for you. This is a Miriam, and this is about choosing forgiveness to move on. In this affirmations will lead to healing forgiveness of whether it's someone else or yourself and I just feel like there's really strong Gemini energy whether it's in your chart or with the person you're dealing with this year forgiveness is key in moving on give me more oh I swear <laughs> oh who is this Gemini <laughs> Libra or Aquarius you are dealing with some air sign energy. Some of y'all will be getting a job offer also in September because of those two tens coming out. And then here's that Aries energy. Some of y'all might need to release an air sign in order to get your fire sign. <laughs> All right. However, forgiveness is key in September. And not just saying I forgive you, but actually really forgiving to free yourself from this energy so that your healing abilities come in and you're working with that heart chakra, that heart centered chakra. Look at those beautiful red roses in the back. That is a lot of heart space. All right. And I feel like once we release this judgmental energy with the King of Arrows, whether this is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or this is just us being too judgmental on ourselves, 
ourselves, then we become successful. We get what we want in order to move forward. <sighs> Moving on into October, November, and December. All right, let me move these down. The theme is decisions. Bum, bum, bum. What will you choose, Taurus? How to get through it is to just breathe. I always think of that movie, um, I think it's a Cinderella story or something with Drew Barrymore and she comes through and she's like, breathe. That's the moment that you're gonna have to take before you make this decision, all right? Because what needs to be left in 2018 is that person that you're fighting with, okay? You see that tug of war that's going on? Relationships should not be a tug of war. However, what it's reminding you is that you have your guides right behind you. You have all of this support. They're ready to fight for you, but you have to allow that decision to relinquish control and breathe. And some of y'all are dealing with relationships because the card 29 comes down to an 11, which comes down to a two. So this is a contract. This is a relationship. This is a partnership that's coming through for you. And the competition card comes down to the number 17, which is an eight, which is communication. You have to communicate that I trust you. We're moving forward. All right. Not that you have to, but it would assist. All right. Let's see what's going on for October, November, and December. I'm going to cut this deck. So I have this beautiful Sagittarius energy coming through and a spirit guide and a upright. And he's telling us patience. Patience is going to be needed in order to make this decision. What is the energy for October as we move forward? Okay, October. October. There's October. Oh, King of Cups. Yeah. November, ooh, three of cups, and December spirit guide. And you have the six of pentacles again at the bottom of the deck. Here's October, here's November, here's December. Now I think we've had a couple of kings come out. So usually when I see more than one king come out, for me, that is recognition in your job, um, a promotion. So around October, there might be an offering, some kind of recognition, and there's the Six of Pentacles coming through, okay? Now, October 3rd, Pluto goes direct. On the 3rd, Mercury enters into Scorpio. Venus enters into Scorpio on the 8th. The 13th, the full moon in Aries, 20 degrees. The 23rd, Sun enters into Scorpio. And the 31st, we have a Mercury retrograde again. So with this King of Cups coming in, I kind of feel like this is an offer. I feel like something's coming to the forefront. Something's coming in to be offered to you. Good things, good energy, right? So let's see what the King advises for the month of October. This could be a, um, a lover coming in. This could be even somebody just offering guidance. But see how he's bringing his cup to those three of cups? It's almost like he wants to add to the abundance, all right? Because he wants you to know that there's just sometimes bad things happen to good people. It's just part of the part of life. But it's not something to beat yourself up about because help is on the way. For those who, have, who are getting out of a relationship around this time, you're going to start looking back and thinking, hmm, I get it. I see why it didn't work and I'm okay with this and I'm going to move on. Because remember in um, September that the key word was forgiveness. And what we're realizing is that we have to communicate that sometimes things just aren't meant to be, right? Because the number 17 comes to an 8. I'm going to get a little bit more on that card. I told y'all some of y'all are going to get a promotion. Bam! King of Pentacles or two suitors. Some sort of recognition. But you have to have the confidence to proceed. What happened in the past does not have to be repeated again. All right? And that's why the King of Cups is telling the King of Pentacles, like, hey, man, that didn't have to happen. And he might even be telling you, that didn't have to happen like that, okay? You have to trust that you have everything you need in order to move forward. And this is you with courage, but this is being discouraged. Don't be hard on yourself in October, okay? Because you're looking at this Three of Cups that's coming in in November. And the Three of Cups is abundance. It's, it's blessings. It's good things. It could be a baby. It could be the birth of your project. It's something good coming in November. So we have the full moon in your sign, 19 degrees. Mercury goes direct on the 20th. New moon in Sag. And then Neptune goes direct on the 27th with the, with the Three of Cups. And as I'm talking to you, I have this fire sign energy by the Two of Cups. I do feel like there's a good partnership coming in. Three of Cups. That doesn't want to clarify. Three of Cups. Okay, we're going to go to the animal deck to help you through November. Whoa. We're going to go with that one because it goes... 
forgiveness. Let go of the judgments. Stop judging yourself, Taurus. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. And this is family forgiveness because the pelican represents family energy also. Forgive. Move forward. Let go of those judgments that you put on yourself that's keeping you discouraged. Remember shame and guilt. We're dealing with those issues right now. So in November, be kind to yourself. Fly high above the situation and see it from a new perspective because it leads you into unconditional love with the deer, with your spirit guide and information coming in and blessings. So in December, on the 2nd, Jupiter enters into Capricorn. Jupiter squares Chiron on the 8th. We have a full moon in Gemini. Chiron goes direct in Aries. Sun enters into Capricorn. And on the 26th, it's the new moon, annular solar eclipse in Capricorn, 4 degrees. So pretty intense energy. Let's see what the Spirit Guide has for you to close out the year and move us into 2020. What does this have for Taurus? have so many cards come out <laughs> tree of life this is such a beautiful card I kind of feel like with this card what's going on is you're developing your roots you're realizing that there are some limbs that need to be trimmed and moved off of the off and out of the way but this is about finding out your roots finding out where you stand and finding out who you are and some of y'all are going to be putting down roots at the end of 2019 because 2020 is ushering in your blessings because you've done all the work you've done all the forgiving of yourself and you're ready to go forward some of y'all are going to be I feel like even moving into your own way of being, finding your own spirituality, being very grounded. This is going to be an important time for you to be grounded as an earth sign. Grounding energy is always beautiful for you guys walking barefoot outside. I know it's freaking cold in December, but getting grounded, whether it's planting some pretty plants indoors. But there has to be something with that root chakra going on at the end of the year. All right. Give me more. Let's see. Look at that. You end the year. On top of your notes right there and some of y'all might be getting married okay because that represents marriage also for me higher education getting yourself grounded so that you can propel yourself into 2020 all right with that being said in love you have to trust your intuition in 2019 baby you need to use your mind's eye things are not as they appear remember what the links was telling you at the beginning of the year so if you can trust your intuition and your discernment you will make better decisions when it comes to love when it comes to finances take a chance this is saying you know what i'm right here this is when i'm going to take a leap of faith i'm going to take that job i'm going to take that situation you know that um that offer that they made for me and i'm going to go forward all right now when it comes to health which is really interesting you have um a backup plan coming in for you so i'm going to tell you like really take care of yourself this month uh this year make sure that you have your insurance make sure that you're going to the doctor those kinds of things nothing to be really be concerned of but i would say just making sure that you're getting your annual checkups okay making sure everything's in line those kinds of things now i forgot to add this with your abundance card you have lord ganesh infinite abundance i feel like obstacles are going to be being removed you will be getting a new offer some kind of job is coming in for you i think it's around july or august i said no it was september so i feel like things are going to be moving towards the latter part of the year now your crystal is amber all right and this is not strictly a crystal it's ancient fossilized tree resin so remember the tree is what you end with and now you're getting amber that's like awesome so this is helping you balance your chakras, especially with your solar plexus and Manipura for healing purposes. At the same time, it reminds us that patience, which is what temperance means. And for me, this looks like the temperance card because it's the tree of life, okay? Temperance, um, it helps with depression and mental imbalances and also helps you to feel connected. It helps treat your internal organs, especially the kidneys, the spleen, the stomach, the bladder, the liver, and gallbladder. Remember, solar plexus is with the tum-tum. Good for overall healing, both the physical and emotional levels. This card indicates a need for balance and healing in your life. Look to the past to shine a light in the future. And that is the second time we talk about the past. So... This is going to be a year of realizations, a year that you're going to trust your intuition to move forward, take the job that they offer you. It's going to bring you blessings. Look at your relationships and see where they can be mended or moved on and make those decisions that resonate with you and your intuition. 
All right. With that being said, thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. Be blessed. Let me know your thoughts. Hit me up at arianaluciano at gmail.com. And thank you for your patience. And like I said, if you need to get your read, you better order now, baby. Love you, fam. And Happy New Year.